Hey guys, it's Dr. Kamel, and we're going to continue on with our ultrasound series, and I'm going to talk to you about how you can use an ultrasound to identify peroneal tendon pathologies. Now, peroneal tendon pathologies can include tendinopathy, split tears, or even full thickness tears. And the huge advantage of, of being able to use an ultrasound is that you can make that diagnosis quick in your office and schedule them for surgery and get them on the track to recovery as soon as possible instead of having to send them out to get a confirmed diagnosis via an MRI. All right guys, now I'm gonna show you how you can use an ultrasound to identify the peroneal tendons. Uh, so I like to use a system similar to how I use a system with the Achilles tendon, uh, but I like to start from the retromalleolar area, uh, just, just posterior to the lateral mal, and work my way down. You will start to see the peroneus longus will dive down uh, under, underneath the cuboid, and then you'll see the peroneus brevis insertion into the, uh, into the fifth metatarsal base. So I'll start transversely or axially. And then right away you see the fibula come in. All right, and what I just, what I absolutely love about this imaging modality is how you can, you can move the foot and you can see those tendons right next to the, let me get some more gel here. You can see those two tendons running right by the distal tip of the fibula. And we know that the peroneus longus uh, runs inferiorly to the peroneus brevis. So we we're able to identify those structures. And this is a little bit difficult because of the curvilinear uh, nature of this tendon. So um, using an ultrasound is a little bit difficult. You have to make sure you keep the probe down as to avoid uh, anisotropy. So we're working our way around, see those tendons, and then I'll switch to the longitudinal view. Again, using uh, movements of the foot to identify the fibrillar structure and making sure that there's no uh, pathology along the way. Oh yeah, you can see it right there as we're working into the fifth metatarsal base, there's the peroneus brevis. I know it's a little bit difficult to identify, um, but here's an example here. And I'm gonna show you just some examples of images that will help you to really um, be able to master this, thanks. All right, now this is a great axial image of the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis as it's passing by the fibula. And you can see that the uh, figures one and two uh, represent the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis respectively. So the green one is the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis is indicated in the blue. The red indicates the tip of the fibula which is um, shown with this hypoechoic structure or dark structure. In this image you can see this is an axial view of the peroneus longus, peroneus brevis and peroneus quartius tendon. The green indicates the intact and normal peroneus longus, which is lying in between the two hemitendons of a peroneus brevis tendon that has suffered a full thickness longitudinal fissure. And you can note the presence of an accessory peroneus quartius tendon that's indicated in the purple. Now this is a great axial image to assess the peroneus longus groove uh, of the calcaneus. And you can also note that the peroneal tubercle is hypertrophied in this case, and you can use the x-ray on the right to correlate the two images together. Now, I really love this short axis view right here. Um, the reason is because this is the beauty of an ultrasound machine, is that you can use it as a dynamic imaging modality and assess for things like peroneal, peroneal subluxation. And you, can see, and you can see the before and after um, manipulating the patient's foot in order to elicit the subluxation and getting clear visual ultrasonography to prove your diagnosis. Now this axial image shows a couple things. First you can see the osperineum which is asterisk on the right side of the image in the bigger red circle and then you see an avulsion fracture which is the smaller red circle 
on the left side of the image. Um, this image shows us a Peroneus brevis tear, and you can see and confirm that with the discontinuity of the echogenic fibrillar fibers, that is of the Peroneus brevis. Now in this image, you can see the same structure, but in the axial and in the longitudinal view. The left side is the transverse or the axial view, and you can see the green structure, which is the Peroneus longus, and it is normal and intact, um, as in there are no tears. However, there is a hypoechoic uh, nature around it, which is indicated with the yellow, which is the which indicates the tenosynovitis that this that this patient is experiencing, and you can also see the same correlated image on the longitudinal axis, which is the right image. Now, as I showed you in the video where I where I demonstrated how to use the ultrasound probe to to identify the peroneus longus, you can see that there was some difficulty with the curvature around the distal tip of the fibula and working your way down distally into the foot. But what I've done for you here is shown uh, the longitudinal axis views, which is the left, but I've sort of connected them to show you its course in the longitudinal axis and compared it with the same uh, image in the transverse view, which is where the tendons, both the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis, pass around the distal tip of the fibula. And here you can see another example of injury to the peroneus brevis tendon. This is an axial view, which shows a partial thickness longitudinal fissure of the peroneus brevis, indicated by the curved black arrow. Uh, this is associated with reactive synovial thickening of the tendon sheath, which is indicated by the shorter arrowheads. Um, the peroneus longus is also indicated in this picture uh, with the green circle labeled number one. And you can also see the calcaneus, which is marked. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited for the next video in this ultrasound series, so stay tuned, you guys. Thanks.